Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Ready? One. Okay. Now take it off. Yeah, you're hitting the light at the moment quite oh, quite no. Oh no. You might be wondering how did we get into this situation in the first place? This is ground affected. My name is your dad and Hey Gears has sent me their latest 3D printing device for me to promote and test for you guys on this channel and I'm about to show you all about it. Full disclosure, I want to say I have totally been paid to make this video. Snacks for later. But that doesn't affect the way that I'm going to test this machine. I am going to be putting this machine through the absolute worst tests it possibly could have. And that is because this company, Hey Gears, have completely claimed that this machine is the easiest thing in the world. And I'm going to be absolutely testing whether this machine is truly plug and play or not. As well as the machine, I was also sent their POW-10 and the POP-10 resin. The POW-10 is a water washable resin and the POP-10 is a high speed prototype resin. That resin is actually incredible, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Of course, they also sent me the heated vat, which is annoyingly an added extra to the machine. I do wish that something like this would be just part of the machine, but I can see what they're trying to do here in getting the price of this machine down. And speaking of price, I just want to quickly talk about the price while I open up the accessory bag here. And the main price for the total machine itself is going to be $999. The early bird price, however, is $799. If you want that heated vat, that is $199 or on the early bird price, $169. The resins for the water washable one is going to be around $55 and uh, for the other resin around $32. It really depends on which one you're going for. Oh. Oh, I like that. The build plate for this particular machine is quite different to something I've usually held in my hands. And this is made of a solid piece of steel. It is literally so heavy. Uh, genuinely, it feels really good in your hands. Uh, I don't really know why they've done this. I wish I knew a little bit more about that side of printing. Uh, but they've done this for a reason. And uh, we will find out later on if that is any worth it. And now to attach that really heavy build plate, they have this industrial sized, one handed, easy to use clip. Now the Z axis on this machine is actually really incredible. I'm not gonna lie, it has a 50 kilogram continuous load uh, reciprocating 10,000 times motion deviation of less than and plus minus only two microns. Uh, that's very detailed information. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, what that means is that this build plate is not going nowhere because the Z-axis on this thing is rock solid. It is genuinely super solid. That little clamp that holds it on is not very little. It is uh, something that I would imagine a rock climber would use to hold him in place. Uh, you probably should not try climbing rocks with it, uh, but it is super, super strong and really easy to use. Uh, one of the real good things about this machine is how nicely that build plate just clips into place. The vat also screws in very easily. It has little locating pins on it. These pins stick out, which also mean if you take out the vat, you can place it on the surface of your table and it doesn't uh, put your FEP all over your dirty surface from the airbrush paints that are inevitably laying over every surface in your uh, area. One of the key feature selling points of this particular machine is the intelligence built into it. Now, of course, this machine can connect to your network, but realistically, this machine is a computer in of itself. It has so many amazing advancements in 3D printing. A lot of monitoring is going on on this machine. For example, the screen is a full frame precision screen. The screen is divided into 60 zones and this essentially helps to calibrate the light intensity and ensure uniformity amongst the entire screen. The other thing that it has is a self-adaptation Z 
whatever that means is basically each material has a slightly different uh, way that it wants to be lifted off of your NFEP and basically this machine figures out what that pressure feels like and doesn't pull too hard or pulls harder according to what it needs to do to make sure that there is no problems with your print. The bottles that you get for putting resin in the machine have these little balls in them. This hasn't changed from the previous version but essentially this means you can't drop resin everywhere and all you do is shove a cartridge into the back of the machine and it automatically feeds the resin into the machine via gravity. There is no suction or pump or anything like that. It just automatically keeps things where it should be uh, according to hydraulic law which is uh, the law that things shall not overflow if things are not overflowing uh, that is science for you now while on the topic of resin i have noticed that another youtuber called greedy 3d has been testing multiple resins in the machine and it seems to work uh, pretty well and there is a reason for this because again it has that adaptive z-axis it's doing that on its own as it feels the pressures it's changing things so this essentially means that if you just refold these bottles with your own resin it probably would work perfectly fine because the machine itself is trying not to fail no matter what now i don't think hey gears wants you to necessarily use other resins uh, but if keeping you locked into their resin is a thing that's stopping you from uh, purchasing something like this maybe think about uh, the fact that you can use other resins i have seen other creators using other resins in this machine specifically due to that really intelligent z-axis whatever is going on in there is actual magic and just briefly while we're on the topic of other creators i want to thank very much again Fohammer for all of his help uh, during uh, my testing of this machine particularly not in these stages but in the later stages and understanding how the z-axis works and the little pressure things and all the other things Fohammer has been a great help to my channel and if you have not watched him before maybe you should because uh, he's the man with all of the fancy words and all of the knowledges and all of the remembering of all the numbers and things because those are things that I'm just no good at remembering. Uh, speaking of numbers, I do need to give you a little bit more information about the actual numbers of this machine. Let's start out with the light source on this machine. The original reflex was 385 nanometer light source and this one is a 405. The screen size on the original was 9.5 but this is a 10.3 inch 8K black and white screen. The NFEP release film is of high quality as it always is. It has the same level of accuracy on the Z-axis as the original machine and it also has a holeless platform. That means that the build plate doesn't have holes. The original machine had perforated holes in that. Uh, another thing that this machine has is a TF card expansion slot so you can uh, expand your storage space. One of the things that is probably important to most people is the actual printing size and on this machine it is 222.3 by 122.5 uh, by 230 millimeters uh, in volume. As I mentioned before, the machine has devices all over it that monitors its situation and it has a very specifically a foreign object detection which can detect an object uh, which is 0 0.2 millimeters in size uh, this is to say that maybe something has fallen off the plate and it's not so happy uh, with the print it will automatically stop the print it is a super super intelligent machine now one of the very important things about this machine is actually uh, the software that comes along with it and hey gears have created an application called uh, bluetooth blue uh, blueprint uh, it's got nothing to do with bluetooth but it is an application where it's with you will it will just do everything for you. Realistically, it will do everything for you. I uh, did not enjoy some of the orientations that it would put the parts into, but that's a computer. It doesn't know what the face of your model is. So I think the best way to kind of approach an app like this, if you're used to the other slicing softwares, is to just kind of move everything into a place that you want them to be essentially you want to rotate them how you would normally have them orientated and then allow the program to repair everything you can hollow them do the holes and whatever but it truly is just one click 
and it will support everything as if you have got the best world supporter uh, sitting in your computer and just automatically supporting things. Now, of course, that coupled with uh, the, pr the printer's amazing friggin' seven-segment motion control in its Z-axis is what's going to create all of this successful printing. These parts that are printed are solid. When I say solid, I mean, it took me two bottles of resin to print this Doctor Doom model that I'm going to show you when we finally get to the revealing pictures. And genuinely, the dude weighs 1.8 kilograms. That is very heavy. And if I tried this on 90% of other printers, with even the most strongest of supports, the very strong chances are this was not going to print. It was going to ruin my FEP, or it was just not going to come out of the printer at all. There would have been large slices attached to my FEP, and I would have just hated life. But this printer genuinely didn't even bat an eyelid. Uh, so I was carrying this to my table, and I happened to drop a piece. And I'm not going to lie, these things are printed in solid resin, and it didn't break. Uh, maybe that's an testament to the quality of the resin. It is literally solid. I think that thing is about 14 kgs. Obviously, it is pointless talking about a machine if I'm not going to show you the results of the prints out of the machine. I want you to take into account a couple things here. Every single one of these pieces is solid. It is literally a solid block of resin including the Gwen statue and this Dr. Doom, by the way, this was sculpted uh, and offered up by Nice X Collectibles. So if you're interested in the models, this is Nice X Collectibles and the Gwen, that came from Abe 3D. I will have links for all the places where I got these guys as well. Um, make sure to check out the description because of course there will be links uh, for the 3D printer and all the rest of it there too. So make sure to check everything. But while you're looking at these prints, what you can see is that I kept everything on the supports because I wanted you to be able to see how the printer itself or at least the app actually decides to put supports on these things the supports are super skinny this means that you are saving resin in the fact that you're not actually using massive supports also i want you to hear exactly how easy it is for these prints to come off now looking closely at some of the details this is uh, obviously a Robert Downey Jr. head that has been sculpted to go with the Doctor Doom because why not? Anyway, I printed this particular Doom in uh, 0.03 millimeters and uh, this is a very low layer height. The printer itself can go down to 15 microns which is 0.015 like that it's literally tiny so the level of detail on this machine is absolutely incredible. Uh, also, I want to just mention that it has this weird little monitoring uh, thing that you can actually watch. It's got like a little heartbeat of the machine so you could watch if there was any issues. And I did have one particular print where at the end of it, uh, it told me that there was two anomalies that happened during the printing. And when I pulled out that print, I could actually see exactly where those two anomalies were. And one of those anomalies, I know for a fact, was me opening the lid to check on the print and the printer knew that I had opened the lid so it is genuinely monitoring everything that happens while it is printing. When I first started using the app and everything I absolutely did not enjoy it and my first plans were to be supporting things it just by myself and then bringing them into the app and then just allowing it to slice it uh, but look at how this thing supported a base it, it's like 12 supports on the bottom there's hardly anything holding it on okay this one a little bit differently but there was a lot more to this base arguably but realistically this thing just does everything it needs to do it's so easy to just click and print and i even used it to help me print something that i'm going to be painting uh, next week's video and uh, that is going to be this Mr. Incredible that is from Zez Studios and uh, again there will be links for all of the models in the description down below I also printed out this really cool gambit this one I got from ES Monsters uh, Patreon and it was one of their uh, collabs with another artist this month all of these models were printed on this printer using the POP10 which is like a lavender color POP10 that I have as well as the 
towel, which is the water washable. Mr. Incredible was printed solely in the water washable, and genuinely, it doesn't soak up all water like some of the water washables that I've used in the past, so that's a good thing. Uh, all of the prints came out amazing. There is not much I can say. Genuinely, the proof is just in the pudding. By the way, I did paint up Dr. Doom, and if you are a patron of mine, you will be getting a completely Patreon-only video on the painting of Dr. Doom. And again, this one came from Nice X Collectibles, so if you're interested, this is coming out, I think, this month or next month. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, don't actually quote me on that. In order to remain transparent, Hagias did ask me to make one small little addition to my video, and that was they asked if I could touch on the hassle-free user experience. For those who want the hassle-free user experience, I am now touching on the hassle-free user experience. Hopefully that helps, and now my video is better. Let's get to continue. So in conclusion, what do I think about this machine? Well, realistically, I was a bit apprehensive at first, but after using the machine and printing out four complete statues, including prepping for work that I needed to do in advance and getting it, it just was easy. Everything was so easy. If you are someone that's thinking of getting into 3D printing and you haven't already got an investment in it, maybe this is the kind of machine for you to start on. This was designed to make 3D printing as simple and easy as possible and genuinely it does just that. I'm going to say, in my opinion, I think this machine is totally worth it. Yes, it is on the pricier side of things, uh, but everything that comes with it is worth all that little bit of extra price, in my opinion, anyway. Of course, I uh, definitely was sent the machine, so take anything that I say with a grain of salt, because that is going to have to be up to you, whether you think this machine is something that you would need in your fleet, or whether it's your first machine. I am now coming to the end of my video, and this is the time where I want to thank everyone who's obviously watched my video, as well as my Patreons, for supporting me and keeping the lights on and blinding my eyeballs. Now, it is the part of the video where I need to tell you uh, that if you didn't like anything that you saw in this video, I really don't actually care, and you can kindly see the door and f 